This message goes out to those in Durant, Oklahoma, Bryan County, Oklahoma, that have an interest in hearing that about some corrupt practices that are going on in your state. Wasted tax dollars, wasted time, courts, police, sadly being used as the weapon to assault an innocent person. Uh, in 2019, some corrupt documents were put in place against me. My divorce decree was changed after I signed it, submitted to a judge without pleading for the changes that were put in the document. My wife was having an affair with an attorney, and his attorney friend was our lawyer, but I didn't know this. I was lied and duped. I mean, that guy should not have been our the only attorney involved in our divorce. We thought we were having an amicable, mutually agreed upon divorce. And then in the finality of the divorce decree, he put in a lifelong injunction, stripping me of my rights to my daughter. It's a little bit more complex than that, but I had already told him I, I didn't agree to anything we had previously agreed to. We were gonna set up custody, we were gonna set up child support, we were gonna set up visitation. Uh, anyways, they put a lifelong injunction inside my divorce decree without pleading for the changes, orally or in writing, is provable on the face of the documents in uh, Sherman, Texas. And uh, when they did all that, I didn't have enough money to hire an attorney to undo what they did. And it sounds so easy for anybody up the socioeconomic ladder to say, uh, just get an attorney, just get an attorney. It sounds so easy, but literally my wife was having an affair with an attorney his best friend was an attorney. His other best friend was an attorney. Like, they just got this whole network of attorney friends. And those friends have dinners with judges. Some of the judges were prior attorneys, and they've been working together in the same areas for years. So they got this whole network of collusion going on. I don't know exactly what what things tie to what, but, like, Judge Phillips in uh, Grayson County should not have signed these altered divorce documents without reading it. I'm sure that he trusted the attorney to be submitting documents that were fully vouched and verified for, but they were not. Guaranteed they were not. It's provable on the face of the documents that no, that they didn't serve me. Notice, putting in a lifelong injunction on the fly in a divorce decree without even pleading for it, a, a, a lifelong injunction should have been a separate matter, separate case number, separate cause number. It should not have been just flung in. It. That's a serious fucking, a lot of ramifications from having a, a lifelong injunction. But anyways, so they put that stuff in there. I didn't have any money. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to use the constitution to fight my battle. So I started preaching about what they did online but basically what they what they put in the document was that I was not allowed to talk about what they did to me I couldn't mention my ex-wife I couldn't mention my daughter on any kind of social media and to me social media is literally just like going down to a courthouse standing there with a sign except I don't have the risk of being assaulted shot arrested I can just do it online no problem and uh so I just said fuck it I'm gonna use my constitutional right anytime that I have had somebody else that was violating a civil uh, court order and the cops show up on it, the, co the cops generally tell me, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. This is a civil matter. And, and that, I, I had to, this was all in the instance of my first wife denying my visitations, like completely violating all of the agreements that we made inside our divorce decree. But, uh, <clears throat> so I said, fuck it. I'm going to violate the civil court order. And then I'll go in there and, you know, face it myself, you know, in a civil matter. But in me posting about what they did to me, you know, they, they changed my documents. They committed fraud. They lied to me. They manipulated me. I haven't seen my daughter right now in four years because of the corruption, the fraud that they did. And all that stuff happened literally because my wife was having an affair with an attorney. And I mean, I wasn't a violent person. I wasn't, a uh, a drug addict. I mean, I, me and her drank a little bit in the evenings, probably like, you know, four to six beers and not every day. And, you know, we were avid marijuana smokers. And I mean, I generally smoked at night. She, she liked to smoke all day long, but she was very, very high functioning on pot. I think it, it made her better, but, uh, not judging on any of that shit. I'm just 
so they, <clears throat> so I started posting publicly and then like nine or 10 months after I started talking about what they were doing to me. And at the same time, nine or 10 months, I'm not seeing my daughter. This was the, I mean, I got, this was the center of my damn universe when, when at this time. And I, and I had no expectation that was, she was going to be removed from my life. It was a complete surprise. January 6, 2018 was the last day that I saw her. So I'm sitting here basically just publicly screaming. Like if you were imagine like someone was in a basement, you know, they're being held hostage, kidnapped, whatever, except, you know, I'm bound and gagged by the damn cops, by the lawyers, by the judges, by the damn, you know, orders, paperwork. So as every time I get a little squeak out into public, <clears throat> they would try getting charges brought up here and there. And they did get, because they got, if you keep trying to get something and you go in and you give your pity party to enough cops, you can find one that'll not fully investigate the matter. Cause no cop that fully investigates the matter. And I don't know why they don't all fully investigate the matter. Like if, if someone says, uh, you know, John Smith broke into my house and, uh, stole my shit, then they, I feel like they should investigate, go over, talk to John Smith, see if he knows anything, you know, see if they can get a read on his body, see if he looks guilty or anything, as opposed to him saying, no, I just stopped by and I grabbed my PlayStation that I bought for my birthday, like, it was not, you know, no Robin House, whatever, get the full story, don't just take the word of one half without getting the full context, especially in something that is a civil matter, something that is based off of a civil document. So anyways, I got two charges brought up on me, and I got those dismissed in the interest of justice. No time, no fees, no fines, no nothing. Like, it's expungeable, but that's another whole fucking bitchy matter of me, because it's like, if you get not guilty of something, it should just vanish off your record. You shouldn't have to go pay $3,500 per charge to get them removed. And both those charges are hurting my ability to make money. I can't do Uber, I can't do Lyft, I can't do Favor, and those are my favorite jobs. Favorite, like, ever jobs. And, uh... So I got those two charges, I got them dismissed, and then he was going through a divorce. Uh, the guy that my wife was having an affair with was having a uh, a divorce with his wife, and I'm guessing that she started text messaging him. Well, he presumed that the text messages were coming from me and called the cops and then used the postings that I use on social media about them and what they did to me as evidence to corroborate the fact that those text messages were sent. I have clear, clean witness that was standing there with me when some of those text messages were sent working on an air conditioner. He's also a bondsman to testify on my behalf right now. They they could have spoke with him and found out that those text messages didn't come with come from me, but they didn't even investigate it. They half-assed this shit, and I tell you what, now I live in Temple, Texas, which is four to five hours, depending on traffic, away from Durant, Oklahoma. So now I'm having to drive, miss days off work. I had to pay a fucking bonds when I had to drive up here and turn myself in for some charges and get arrested for them because they didn't fully investigate the matter. They definitely had ways of contacting me. Everybody knows how to contact me if they really want to get a hold of me. My email's been the same forever. The person that's accusing me of sending the text messages has my email. I did not send the damn messages, and I can even prove across multiple court cases that the shit that they were talking about in the text messages, I was trying to figure out what the text messages were even talking about in the court case, if you just read the transcripts of the second protective order hearing where Rob Henderson, the attorney in Durant, Oklahoma, was trying to get a protective order against me when he was separating from uh, my ex-wife because he wouldn't be protected underneath the umbrella of her protective order anymore. And honestly, I don't I think that even if I had sent the messages, which I didn't, even if I had sent the messages, I would be justified in doing so because they stole my daughter. I haven't seen her in four years. anyways the i have court tomorrow i filed for a court appointed lawyer in early uh december and here we are all the way up to my court date i'm supposed to go in and put in a, a plea of guilty or not guilty and i'm not guilty i'm not going to plead guilty even if they offer me no no your know, time served the $10 fee and take a $25 class. I don't care what they offer me. I cannot take it because I didn't do it. And if I take this charge, even with a minimal spanking, then the next time that they claimed that I sent some messages that I didn't send, they'll use this 
case against me as evidence in the next one to try and make that one stick. And they will keep doing it. This is two protective orders and three charges for my daughter being kidnapped from me because they were having an affair. <clears throat> I don't know what to do because literally when I walk up into that courthouse, I feel like I'm walking up into a building that are all of Rob Henderson's friends. Like Durant, Bryan County Courthouse, when I walk up in that courthouse, I swear I hear them start networking. Like I was, I went over to the sheriff's office, uh, which is right next door to the courthouse. And uh, I was originally, you know, I was asking around in the courthouse, hey, you think it's okay if I stand out here with a sign and protest like what's going on in y'all's county here? And then I went over to the sheriff's to ask because I couldn't get a straight answer from anybody in the courthouse. And the sheriff was like, yeah, you can stand out there as long as you aren't interfering with anybody's business. Go right on ahead. Uh, you know, do your thing. You know, use your, use your constitutional rights. And uh, while I'm standing over there talking to this lady, I talked to her for probably 40 minutes. And, I mean, she felt what I was saying. But there was a lady that called and the, the lady answered it on speakerphone. And she said, hey, uh, do you got a warrant for Lawn Meeks? And I literally leaned around the partition window and said, no, I turned myself in this morning. And the the lady repeated what <clears throat> I had said and said, uh, no, he's already been cleared on his warrant. He's already turned himself in. And she goes, oh, shoot. I, can't. I was hoping we could get him for something. It's like, why in the fuck do, why in the fuck should I feel like when I'm in a town that they're all rooting against me when I'm not guilty of anything except a guy that has had his daughter ripped out of his life and refuses to stay silent through what they did to me? That's what happened. I can prove the shit out of all of this. There's two full court hearings of transcripts that you can read that if you just read the transcripts, Rob Henderson committed perjury. Guaranteed you can prove from one transcript to another he committed perjury. In the first court hearing, I asked him if you've been using methamphetamines or any uh, Adderall, whatever. Amphetamines is really the, the root of it. And he said no. And then in the next court hearing, I asked him the same question. And he said, I used them once. And I, I, was, I was backed up on case files and blah, blah, blah. But I purchased them from you, making me his drug dealer. And, and to me, my, the lawyer that I spoke to said, and, and I'll, I've got a lawyer I can talk to, but I can't hire, hire him for every matter. But uh, he said that the reason why he made me his drug dealer was because then I would look worse being the dealer than him as the user. I mean, I get that because, you know, uh, <clears throat> dealers are preying on, preying on people uh, and their addictions and driving them down the hole and shit like that. But I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I've, I've never, I've never even held an Adderall or meth. <laughs> uh, I just would like to find somebody in Durant that actually cares about hearing like all the nuances of this and then holding these people accountable. And honestly, like the sad part is, is like, I don't want, I don't want two lawyers to lose their licenses. Like I don't want, you know, anybody to lose, you know, lose the ability to provide for their family. Like I don't, I just, I literally want them to stop. You know, I can forgive them for what they've done. It's just hard to forgive somebody for what they are currently doing. Like you can, maybe you can forgive your rapist, you know, down the line, but it's hard to forgive them while they're raping you. And to me, I say that I'm a victim of a crime worse than rape, because if you ask, I don't care how many people you ask, I'm over 3000. But if you ask anybody on the street, would you much rather be raped or have your child stolen from your life? My child was stolen from my life. Everybody picks rape before they have their child stolen from their life. It's been four years since I've seen my daughter. And I'm telling you, I was morning, noon, and night, full-time daddy. I took her to daycare. I brushed her teeth. I was the one that cooked her meals, picked her up from daycare. I was also working a 40-hour job. I, you know... I did basically like the top cleaning of the house and then my wife would come in and do like the detail cleaning. She was more of an organized person. She'd, I'd wash and uh, dry laundry and then she'd put it all away. You know, she, she liked everything color coded and organized and stuff like that. But I mean, John Nix is the one that changed the documents. John Houston Nix. There's a huge billboard. Every time I get to drive up to court, I see this massive billboard of the person who I consider committed a crime worse than rape and i just i i feel like honestly the crime the crimes are the same like you know metaphorically they're the same i was taken advantage of i was taken advantage of by people that i trusted not to do me harm <clears throat> i left myself vulnerable and exposed i had a low top on saying look at these but you can't touch them because you because i trust you not to touch them 
but they did it anyway. They fucking, I, I, I feel like I can say they raped me and I don't feel like I'm, I mean, sometimes you run across someone who doesn't really know the full depth of this, but if you listen to me long enough and you, you see, and I've even asked rape victims that question, even rape victims would much rather be raped again than have their child ripped from their life. And my child was ripped from my life. I went from playing with her at the park on January the 5th. I got videos and pictures of us having a good time, making some awesome videos. And then I got the next day where I caught her boss at the house with my daughter and then both still acting like nothing was going on. And it wasn't until like almost a year later before I found out that they were, you know, I knew they were having the affair, but I didn't know the, the details of it. But when I got Rob Henderson on stand, I actually got to ask him questions. And he said that their, their affair began May 18th, 2018. So that meant from May 18th, 2018 until June when me and my wife decided to get a divorce. But we decided we were going to live together because financially we couldn't even we couldn't even separate because all this shit literally started on the fact that the dude doesn't pay her enough to survive on. You know, we both started around the same wages. She was at 925, I was at 10. And by the end of six months, I was making 1850 and she was making 1225. Or yeah, 12 1125. 1125 an hour. And after he promised her initially, if she showed good, he would give her a significant raise at the end of 90 days. 90 days rolled around, he gave her a one dollar raise. She came home crying. <clears throat> because <clears throat> I guess he thought a significant raise was a dollar, you know, and I don't know. I'm getting off way into too much stuff here. Okay. So I feel like I have no fair chance in Durant, Oklahoma at a court hearing. They can't, you know, I asked for a court appointed lawyer. The problem here is, is that even whenever I was trying to hire a lawyer and I had money, which I don't have money now, but when I had money, I was trying to hire a lawyer in Durant. I called every single lawyer in that town multiple, multiple times because there's only a few damn lawyers in that town. And I spoke with their secretaries and some of them took consultation fees only to just tell me, you know, thanks for the $80, but we can't represent you because we've got conflict of interest. Well, wouldn't you have known that before? Like here in Texas, you put in a person's name, you put in the opposing person's name, and then you know whether there's conflict of interest right off the bat. You don't hear their whole damn story and then take $80 from them and then say, no, I'm sorry, we can't represent you because we've got conflict of interest. And to me, in that scenario, I'm just going, okay, well, I just told him like every aspect and detail of evidence that I have against these people. And now he's just going to run over to Rob Henderson and uh, my ex-wife and tell them what happened. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a messed up, but I'm telling you, since my daughter got ripped from my life, I've had to check in with a bondsman about 200 times. I've had to get bonded out of jail twice. I had uh, to drive to Oklahoma. Oh, man, hold on. First off, the, just the court hearings, just the court hearings in my hometown. I probably had thirty appearances that I had to show up to to finally get them dismissed. No matter what they offered me. At first, it was like you know, pay your lawyer fees, pay your court costs, pay a uh, abuse victim class. And then uh, we'll give you time served and uh, no fines or f anything like that. And then I was like, no, I'm not taking that. And then they got it all the way down to offering me time served, no fines, no fees, no court costs if I just take the, the deal. And I said, no, I can't even take it with nothing like that because this stuff will get used against me in later shit. I've witnessed it over and over again in my life. It don't matter whether you're guilty or not. They ask you, have you ever been charged with the crime? Yes, you can be charged with a crime, but you're not guilty of it. I don't think you should be able to ask somebody if you've been charged with a crime. You should be able to ask them if they've been convicted of a crime. Because it's bullshit to use a fucking false charge to get someone arrested. Or, or to help uh, prove that a protective order is needed. Because that's what they did. I violated that uh, those injunctions that were put, put in place through fraud. And then they... Uh, used my violation of those, you know, when I was posting on social media as grounds to file for a protective order. When they were in the protective order hearing, my ex-wife got on stand and said that there was never any physical abuse in the house. I talk loud. Yes, I talk passionately. When I talk about shit, I talk passionately, but I don't get screaming rage violent. Like my favorite people on earth are Alan Watts, uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud. Like I'm a peaceful, mindful 
I call myself an urban monk. Like I'm, I'm not um, sitting in a cave. Like, but this is my cave. It's my car, you know. And you know, my meditations. I try and do walking meditations, standing meditations, laying meditation. Every I try and to me, meditation truly is just staying in a state of mindfulness. And mindfulness is to me is to try and get detached from the situation and observe it, and then uh, you know try and. <sighs> I can't detach from my daughter. I cannot detach from my daughter. That's like that's, that's the one avenue of life to where now, like when I get to talking about things, like you'll see my emotions break when I start getting into the details of her. Like certain songs will come on the radio and I will full out start bawling. Like it's literally in, in hearing those songs, it's like a rape victim having to watch their their rape take place again. And I'm just trying to find a way to stop this shit from happening. There should be a police 911 number that you can call and say, hey, these corrupt lawyers are doing all this corrupt shit and I can prove it. And they're saying, oh my God, we hate people like that. Let's get them. You know, just like when you call a cop and the cop, hey, I, I just got raped. The guy's heading southbound on 3rd Street. Boom. You got five, six, seven cop cars hunting this motherfucker down. You know, you could get helicopters involved. And I've seen that shit going down, not over even a rape. I've seen that shit going down over someone stealing a blanket from a fucking uh, a Sears. And I saw someone get tased in the middle of a Red Lobster because they stole a blanket from Sears and the chase ended in the middle of a Red Lobster. So, like, the, the, the lengths that they're willing to go for petty-ass crimes that pr protect corporations is ridiculous whenever the serious fucking crimes that judges and lawyers and politicians are committing, they don't do anything about, and it's fucking bullshit. And that's why there's no number to call, because they're the ones that would be paying for that number to be there. They pay for the ones that protect the petty crimes that can stamp people under ridiculous fucking charges so that they can be felons for the rest of their life and end up being slaves to the system. That's the new fucking Nazi branding on people's fucking hands. All right. Anyways, I'm going to get off here. I feel like y'all got an idea. If you want to contact me, give me some input. My name is Lon Meeks. On Facebook is Brandon Meeks. I run a page called Awakening the Soul at Quinn and Creed uh, at Q-U-I-N-A-N-D-C-R-E-E-D. -E -E My phone number is posted on there. Y'all can reach me. I mean, I'll say it here too. 254-421-8379. I just need somebody, an investigator, a cop, a prosecutor, someone with the Oklahoma Bar Association, which I have called them multiple times. They don't even seem to care about this shit. And I don't submit documents, right? That's probably where my, like, my biggest problem is, is. I don't believe that if a, rape pers a person gets raped, you don't make them go file this or go get this certified or go get this notarized or have to, have to go pay $10,000, $15,000, $100,000 for an attorney to battle this shit. You fucking grab, you get, you go after the bad guys and you fucking put the damn victim behind you and you protect them. And I'm the victim in this and they keep violating me. Every day that I do not see my daughter is another minute that they are violating me. And I'm tired of dealing with this shit. It's been going on for four years and I have not seen her that whole time. Every once in a while, I'll find some random scrap of a picture of her online and I don't even know what she looks like now. It's been the oldest picture I got of her is probably a year and a half. Mm. All right, I'm going to get off here. Love y'all. Please, somebody, if anybody can think of anything. I mean, I've tried contact news. I've tried contacting every news outlet in, in that town, and they just don't touch shit like this. And, and I think that's by design, too. Like, when you're watching the shit that goes on in the news, how they pick and choose which things. Like, why wasn't Hunter Biden's laptop a big fucking deal? Because they're hiding everything for these motherfuckers that do shit like that. <sighs> All right, stop. See, this is where I'm going to... All this shit started. Like, my fucking observations of all this corruption that goes on in our system began with me getting the victim of the corruption.